Hey, welcome back to part four of the 1JZ S14 build. In the last video, you would have seen me finish up the turbo setup and the rest of the, all the, uh, the stainless steel work. So now that we got all that done, it's time to work on everything that's aluminum. And uh, I've got everything laid out over here. Um, got some vibrant tubing for the swirl pot. Um, some random tubing, inch and a half, two inch, or sorry, that's two and a half inch. Um, some vibrant inch and a half, but I also have inch and three eighths because the inlet and outlet on the Koya is inch and three eighths as well. So probably do inch and a half into the swirl pot because um, I don't have any bends uh, with the inch and three eighths. And, uh, on the outlet of the swirl pot, I'll probably use this to match up with the, the radiator. And then I've got Koyo cap because they don't ship these radiators with caps. Super annoying. And then for the swirl pot, I went with the vibrant um, radiator cap weld uh, fitting, I guess you want to call that. And then also their billet cap. Um, might do something cool if I can. I'd like to get like my logo laser engraved in this. So I don't know if I'll have time or able or be able to do that. So, and then these are the uh, bungs for the thermocouples that they want. I'm gonna do one on the inlet, one on the outlet, just so that they can monitor what the radiator is doing how much temp it's actually pulling out. Um, then I showed you guys the fan and shroud setup in the last video, but I'll show you again. It's the Coil Rad um, S14 LS swap radiator. Um, and then just the universal spall dual fan uh, setup. Um, flows like 2700 CFM. Uh, I'm going to have to make some brackets to mount this to the radiator. But before I do that, there is a, uh, a gap on top and bottom. And where you can see my finger, there's this um, extra lip that will need trimmed out just so that sits flush onto the radiator. Uh, so that, that shouldn't be too bad to do. And then for the... For mounting, I might do some like L brackets on the side with some rib nuts. And there's some some bolts at the top. I'm not sure if I want to utilize those yet or not. Possibly, but it might be pretty tricky. So I don't know. We'll see about that. Might just do L brackets on the side. One here, one here, and same on the other side. So we'll get to that bridge when the time comes. Um, and then on the car, I still need to uh, cut out their core support that they that they modified to tilt the radiator forward some for more clearance. Um, and then for the swirl pot, uh, I'm gonna unbolt this guy, their thermostat. Uh, well, I guess it's not the thermostat, just their water outlet. I'm going to take that off, figure out a way to um, notch a like a two and a half inch hole saw to cope the end of the this outlet to match perfectly onto a two and a half inch tube like on the side. Um, kind of like, I've got something I can show you with. So, flip this one out. So this is something I've I've notched before. Um, messed up. Uh, not really sure what happened. I think I used the wrong filler rod on accident. Well, I tried tacking this and just ruined it. But um, you want to cope it so it kind of goes into the side of the tube, so that when the water 
enters the swirl pot, it uh, actually swirls the water. And <clears throat> the outlet you wanna put on the opposite end so that it, it enters in, swirls, and then it, the exit is on the other end of the swirl. So it's um, pulling air out of the system and it'll bleed out of the cap into your overflow. Um, so that's the, uh, the theory behind that. Also, these are uh, the caps that I'll be using to cap the top and the bottom of the swirl pot. Kind of sit on top like this, obviously wrong size tubing. But yeah, kind of get the idea. Um, just using this for an example. So that's kind of what the idea of the swirl pot is. And then last thing, modify this for the intercooler piping. So that's super easy to do, but really need to um, modify this and make some more room. Uh, but before I cut all that, I want to get the radiator and fan shroud uh, mounted together as one unit. Also, I'm probably going to have to cut these mounts off because it's meant for stock location radiator, which is in these tension rods. But um, they need to be like back here so they don't match up because... It's already modified to have the radiator pushed forward anyways, and that's moving the radiator from the factory location. Um, so I'm going to cut those bottoms off and figure out a new mounting solution. They use these little U-cups with foam um, inserts before. I don't know if I'll use that again or not. We'll see. First thing I need to do is get the, uh, the fans mounted to the radiator. So... It's going to be the first order of business and then start test fitting and uh, clearancing the core support, moving stuff around to get it to fit. And then we'll move, move on from there. So, yeah, let's get into it. All right, Tyson just finished up uh, fitting the shroud to the radiator. Uh, I just laid out a tape, uh, piece of tape across the edge, cut it with the air saw, cleaned up the cut with the flap wheel. And it's fitting pretty good. I'm gonna put a foam insert around the whole perimeter of the radiator just to help fill uh, any little gaps along the way, just to have a much more sealed shroud. Um, pro tip, make sure if you're ever working with any radiator or just any radiators that are still good, put in some uh, cardboard just to help protect the fins um, and then for mounting this, uh, I got these aluminum bosses with M6 by one threaded holes in them. I'm going to weld two on each side. Use this one inch strip, eighth inch thick, um, stock that I got and, uh, make little brackets from the shroud to this, to this boss. Now just bolt everything together like that. Um.
I got the old um, core support cut out. I got the new one cut, but I kind of want to show you guys what I did. Um, so this was originally the bar going this way, and then this was buttered up against to it. So I kind of I cut it here um, f as flush as I could with this bar, and there's a big hole right here. So I made a cap uh, and ground the edges of the original core support, um, the thickness of the material so that when I weld it in here, it's it's nice and flush. Um, got it as nice as possible. There's a lot of layers here and it kind of welded like ass, but um, got it as good as it's gonna get. And then uh, these aren't nothing, I shouldn't say nothing, but how the core support was cut was not symmetric from side to side. Here, this tube was, um, right on the edge of the core support here, the core support was cut um, and like overlapped and they welded on the edge. But same thing, I um, uh, put a cap in here, ground it flush, and another little tricky thing, the way that I'm putting in the new uh, core support, it's kind of like on the front side and I wanted a nice, clean, straight edge right here. I'll show you what I'm talking about, but the end of this doesn't make the point where this angle's at. So I had to get a little creative <clears throat> with these cuts. This side, not as, not as crazy as a cut, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I wanted to do is keep this plane and the same on this side. <clears throat> and uh, this cut is a little wild, but it allows me to do what I'm trying to do and I've got this um, for the sake of example I'm gonna take one inch flat stock uh, thinner than this gonna use eighth inch and Weld it all together just to give it some strength. And same on this side. So that's kind of the idea behind this because I couldn't just weld right on this corner. I'm going to weld the inside on both sides. Um, and then it's going to get welded to uh, this other part. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some more plates, cap these ends, and water it all together. Should look pretty decent. I'll, I'll blend it all as best I can to make it look um, as seamless as possible. So, yeah, that's what I'm getting into next. What's up, buddy? All right, so I got the, uh, the upper bar plates welded in, smoothed out, and uh, let's see how it looks. About as good as it's gonna get. So I'm gonna tack this in. Um, not gonna fully weld it first until I uh, get the radiator sitting in here and looking at the clearance, what it what it's looking like. But there should be plenty of room for the fans and the radiator and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that test fitted up in here. And then once all of that looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this out. So I just tried to fit the radiator and. It wasn't fitting, not because it had anything over here, but 
um, this harness gets in the way of the radiator on both ends. And uh, not so bad on this, but obviously that's still not long. The radiator sit all the way far forward. It's mainly over here. Basically, right in this corner where this harness is hitting, I'm gonna take a hole saw and cut a section out, uh, kind of like a half moon, I guess you could say, on both ends, clean it up, clean the edge up, and so it's not gonna cut the harness, and that should like shift the harness over out of the way and get enough room to fit the radiator. Oops. Fit the radiator where it needs to sit. So we got the um, core support clearance. I'm gonna uh, clearance some more out just because it's still kind of hitting the radiator right there. Um, so maybe uh, come down a little bit more and out. Uh, this side is good. Once all this is like supported properly, it'll be fine. I kind of clamped everything in because I wanted to see if I can get the radiator in and out um, easily before I tack, uh, weld that in. And we got some clearance, so that's good. So yeah, at this point I'm gonna tack in that bar and just weld it out and move on from there. So let's keep rolling. I got the core support all welded in. She ain't going nowhere. Um, wish I had a MIG welder for welding to the factory core support because that kind of welded like ass with a TIG. It's pretty dirty metal plus all the paint and whatnot. But it's solid. And on the fan, uh, I pulled this back apart because I need to uh, do a couple things before putting it back in the car. Uh, I needed to clearance the shroud for some welds that prevented this from fitting flush on the radiator. Um, and then uh, I wanted to put foam around the whole perimeter of the fan and I wanted to prevent the center of this f flexing in into the radiator because it does move because it's only held together with these two steel rivets. That's how a spall uh, ships these fans. But um, I want to prevent this from uh, hitting the face of the radiator. So I got uh, from McMaster these little rubber bumps or bumpers. Um, and the uh, OD of the small part is the same as the ID of these holes. So won't fall out, nice snug fit. So if it does flex, these rubber bumpers will hit first. And then this is the foam that I will be um, putting on the perimeter of the radiator, or not the radiator, the, uh, the shroud, to have a perfect seal and also prevent chafing from happening. So I'm gonna get that installed. All right, so here's how it looks with the um, the uh, the foam gasket in place. Nice, perfect seal around the whole thing. I didn't even think about that um, getting in the way. Might pull that off and get that better. But the uh, 
the bumpers actually came out a little bit better than I thought. Let's see if I can get the camera in there. It's actually um, resting on this little lip right here before it even gets to the uh, the fins, so that's holding it up. You can kind of see. So that's good. Don't have the um, contact with the fans in the center, so pretty happy with that. So now we just got to get that back in the car and gonna work on this next I already pulled the bolts out but um, yeah gonna get creative with this thing so should be a fun little project turning that into a swirl pot so let's get into that so I got a couple more things done that I didn't film nor did I really talk about um, basically made some mounts for the radiator Made a couple on the bottom too. Um, and also the um, overflow port here. I weld that shut because we're going to have one on the uh, the swirl pot. And you can't have two because that kind of messes with the, the cooling system when you got two pressurized caps on the system. So the cap that's going to go here is solely just sealing off the system. So you'll have two um, fill spots to... Um, fill up the cooling system easier and uh yeah the only one that's going to have a pressurized cap will be the one on the swirl pot and that's going to go to the overflow in case that ever over pressurizes so only one pressurized port on the system not two so i didn't want to get too wild on the two notch here but kind of got a little wild setup going on now um yeah so I couldn't clamp it normally in here because the height of where I needed a notch the water neck was way too low and I couldn't get this high enough so I pulled the whole clamp assembly off um, and then I clamped this angle aluminum to uh, the base of the notcher um, and then I got this uh, I forget what this is called but you can like build like structures with it there's like little slots with bolts and whatever i had it laying around um that's the new backstop because i can't uh rest it up against the base because of the base of the notcher itself and the bolt there I had to clear that um and then i had to use these clamps to clamp the tubing that's tacked tack welded in four spots to the water neck it feels pretty sturdy right now. The whole unit moves as an assembly. Um, I zeroed an angle finder off of this, made sure this is within uh, a degree. It's pretty hard to get that per perfect, but uh, the plan is to notch it right through there with my two and a half inch hole saw, so it's perfectly coped for the two and a half inch aluminum tube. So let's uh, start cutting to this thing, see. <laughs> if it uh, doesn't get too wild. So this wasn't what I was hoping for, but looks like I'm going to have to um, finish this by hand, unfortunately. So got most of it through. Was uh, going pretty, pretty good. Nice clean cut, but yeah, can't really finish that in the hole saw as I just broke the only thing that was holding it to the base. 
So let's try to figure that one out. So what I ended up doing was just taking a hole saw, or not a hole saw, uh, angle grinder, and just cutting between the two spots where the hole saw stopped at. And now I can take some two and a half inch tube and that fits the, uh, the, the notch super nice. But now at this point, what I'm gonna have to do is um, finish this with the flap wheel, just slowly take material out of that until this uh, drops all the way down nice, nice and uh, tight. But I'm gonna try to clean the inside in here and maybe if I can get a get a sharpie mark in there of some sort, possibly I don't know, or just do the good old take a little bit out of time and just keep checking it until it fits good all the way through. But yeah, that's what uh, I'm gonna try to do. All right, so here's the final notch, and uh, I guess I went in a little bit too deep. Um, I wanted to notch it all the way through. But uh, yeah, it's kind of in the way of the sensor to do that. So I, I came up with a solution that I think will look good too. Basically just gonna put the, um, the bottom of the, the swirl pot like that. kind of hard to hold it perfectly and show you guys but there we go so I'll just uh I'm gonna weld this up well not with this this is stainless but I'm gonna weld up uh, one end of this um probably smooth out that weld on the side that's gonna butt up against this and then um mark it up cut that hole through uh, still got to finish uh, cleaning this up, getting the, this ready to weld, probably pull these sensors out. And yeah, and then uh, next step is getting the height that I want and welding the top on with the, the cap. All right, so I went ahead and uh, got this all traced out. And um, obviously that's not where the port's at. <clears throat> it's pretty much uh, that corner right there. And I made the line extra thick. Um, on the ID of the, the port because with the thickness of the wall on this, I don't need to uh, have it um, right on the, the very edge because that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult to weld. So I'm going to pretty much port it to um, that size and then I'll be able to look inside and see if I need to take more material out. But uh, just a good reference and guide while I'm cutting um, this hole into the, the swirl pot. So I also had to go ahead and uh, smooth out the weld right here to uh, get it to fit flush on the housing. So uh, hole saw this out, um, get majority of the material and then probably finish it off the, the carbide. So gonna get into that right now all right so I, I kind of messed up and uh, forgot to record the um, cutting this out but it's cut out and I test fitted it and located the uh, I want to weld this on so I got a little mark on there There we go. It's gonna line that, that up. 
weld this top um, fitting on, and then uh, we'll be able to weld this out and bolt it onto the car, and then uh, get the outlet go into the radiator. Probably gonna have to mod the radiator for how I want to do it. So, oh well. All right, so now we got all the fab work completed. Got the swirl pot finished. Modified the compressor cover for the intercooler piping. Um, the, uh, I was able to make this uh, previous upper hose work for here with some flexing. It fits pretty decent. Uh, there's probably better options, but just working with what I got here. Um, Tyson's being a good boy, per usual. Yeah, so I'm going to end the video here now that all the fabric is finished. Uh, the next video is going to be the final install of all the parts. And um, hopefully getting, getting the link installed, uh, the catch can installed, and maybe some dyno tuning. So... I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Hope to see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, hope, hope you enjoy the content I've been putting out. Thanks guys.